that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning. I am Pastor Joni Schilling, and I am delighted to be able to lead us in worship this morning along with this wonderful team of people. And we are all blessed to be able to come together to worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So we welcome you here in person in our parking lot and also online. If you are worshiping online, we invite you to go to the right upper right hand corner to click on the connection tab and fill out information there to let us know that you are here with us. Today we continue our teaching series entitled Worship, Living in Awe of God. Today's message is based on a famous story that Jesus told, the story of the Good Samaritan, and is titled, Repairing the World. Will you join me now in an opening prayer? Almighty and everlasting God, in whom we live and move and have our being, you created us for yourself so that our hearts are restless until they find rest in you. Grow our hearts so that we serve the needs of your hurting children and strengthen our purpose to live according to your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. And now let us begin our worship as we sing, O oh, Worship the King. Worship the King, all glorious above. O oh, gratefully sing God's power and God's love. Our shield and defender, the Ancient of Days, pavilioned in splendor and girded with praise. O oh, tell of God's might, O oh, sing of God's grace, whose robe is the light, whose canopy space, whose chariots of wrath the deep thunder clouds form, and dark is God's path on the wings of the storm. Thy bountiful care, what tongue can recite? It breathes in the air, it shines in the light. It streams from the hills, it descends to the plain, and sweetly distills in the dew and the rain. That was good singing in the cars, by the way. So this morning, we are going to hear what it means to be a good Samaritan. And a good Samaritan is somebody who loves their neighbor. But we have to know who our neighbor is to be able to love our neighbor. And our neighbor, we find out, is everyone we come into contact with. And this week, I found out the cost of what it, it is to love our neighbor. For me, the cost of loving my neighbor this week was 99 cents. Yes, 99 cents to love my neighbor. So as part of our Vacation Bible School, we have a list of suggestions of ways to love our neighbor. And one of those suggestions was to buy a candy bar for the cashier when you go to a, a store. So I got to Meyer this week and I got up to the cash register and I said, what's your favorite candy bar? 
And she said, oh, I love every candy. Well, who doesn't, right? I mean, I'm with her. And I said, well, what kind of candy bar would you like this week or the, today? And she said, I would like a payday. And I said, okay, put one. I went over and grabbed it, and I put it on the belt. And she started crying. And I said, it's, it's just a 99-cent candy bar. And she said, you don't know how much that means to me. So this week, a 99-cent candy bar was all it took to bring somebody to tears and to show them how much somebody else loved them. And it was such a simple act, but it was such a powerful act. So I encourage you guys to find simple ways to love your neighbor because something as small as a candy bar or a handwritten note is something that can show someone how much you love them. And your neighbor can be anybody. You can write a note and you can leave it on the bathroom mirror at a park to tell them how much you appreciate them for cleaning that bathroom. Or you can, like I did, buy a candy bar for someone. And it's a small gesture that means so much. So think about ways that you can love your neighbor this week. Would you pray with me? God, thank you so much that you give us small and simple ways that we can love those around us. All of the people we come in contact with are our neighbors. And help us to love them the way that you love us. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. So another way that we can be good Samaritans is by sharing our resources, our talents, and our, our gifts with people in need through the work of a church. So if you choose to give back to God through this particular faith community, you are invited to do so either by mailing or dropping off your contribution. Going to the giving tab in the upper right hand corner of the screen setting up the Tithely app through the church website. And for those of us worshiping here in person, you can give your gifts in the big orange buckets as we leave today. Now let us prepare our hearts as Jerry leads us in our prayer chorus entitled Spirit of the Living God. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Let us pray. Living God, God ever present, God ever loving, God who never forsakes us. We do come to worship and adore you this day for it is in our heart's connection with you that we find our peace. Lord, you have challenged us during this season to worship you in new ways. And we are thankful, Lord, for the blessings that we've had for so many years to worship you freely and present and all together in one space. But we also thank you for showing us new ways to worship you individually and as a church family. 
Lord, we would ask you today, based on today's scripture, that you would show us who is our neighbor. Now, we may tend to think of those we live around or those with whom we go to work, but we ask that you would give us eyes to see our neighbors in other places, like in stores and gas stations and walking, walking down the street that our neighbors would also be those people that we never con are in contact with, those we hear about in the news that are suffering, those who see things differently than we see them, that they also would be our neighbors that we would seek to, to reach out to and to understand. Where we confess those times when we have been prone as as our, is true in the story of the Good Samaritan, we are prone to step over and walk past those who are hurting. Lord, it takes courage that you give us to step into an uncomfortable place. So Lord, help us to have courage to step into those places that are places we would normally avoid. That our presence might be a particularly strong source of light because perhaps we might surprise someone with our desire to serve our neighbor. Lord, we lift up to you those today that are facing their mortality, who are in hospice care or anticipating that that is their next step. Remind them of who they are in you and how this life is not all that there is to live, that your promise is for eternal life. Lord, we lift up to you those who are facing separation from a loved one because of physical distance or uh, incarceration or the limited visitation in our care facilities. Lord, whatever it is that separates us from our loved ones, we pray that you would fill the hole that is present in all those individuals. With a, with a sense of your spirit and a sense that we are united, not just physically to one another, but in our spirits. Lord, we lift up to you those who are facing a difficult diagnosis, those who are afraid of losing their job or those who have lost their jobs. Lord, we pray for all of us that are facing uncertainty about our future particularly around uh, going back to school, and those who are making those decisions, and back to worship, Lord. We just seek your wisdom that we might not uh, be limited in worshiping you, but also be safe. So grant us your peace. Grant us your wisdom. Grant us the assurance that you are holding us all. In the name of the Father who gave us life, and the Son, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, good morning, everyone. Morning to you that are here in the parking lot with us this morning, and good morning to you who are at home. We're glad you are here. My name is Russ Titchener. I'm one of the pastors here at Mommy United Methodist Church, and uh, and it is a beautiful day to worship God, and we are glad we are together in spirit and in person. So, uh, uh, blessings this morning. Um, I was thinking as I was working on this sermon about a uh, a uh, a tradition that my parents uh, established early on in, in their relationship um, because they had a relationship with God. Um, uh, and that was simply their, their tradition of Sunday morning worship. 
after they were first married, and then as our family grew, every Sunday we went to church. Uh, and, and even after the kids left home, uh, and even after my mother and father retired and, and got one of those big rigs, right, a Winnebago-type rig, uh, they would go from town to town, from state to state, but on Sunday mornings, that Saturday night before, they would go and find a church somewhere. And, uh, and Sunday morning, there they would be worshiping, worshiping together. Once while I'll talk about this with my mom, she said that, that among many other things, such as worship and, and her uh, community uh, that was in the worshiping uh, space uh, and, and her faith, uh, that among other things, going to church on Sunday morning just had always helped her to have a better week. Uh, and I believe one of the reasons that she experienced having a better week after she spent a day in worship or a morning in worship uh, is because our worship of God always changes our focus, changes our focus off of our situations and, and, and our uh, turning inward and changes our focus onto God and onto other people. And so let's take a, a moment uh, to pray this morning before I move into the sermon. Heavenly Father, you have called us to be a worshiping people because, Lord, uh, you desire to be worshiped by those who love you, to reflect the love that you have given to us. Lord, it is our greatest act of obedience. It is, uh, Lord, how we uh, show um, our love for you and, and how we, Lord, um, witness to others what it is to be in relationship with Jesus Christ. And so, Lord, help us to understand more fully worship today once again, uh, how it is not just on Sunday morning, uh, just in the gathering of the uh, gathered body of faith, which is wonderful, but it is uh, uh, throughout the week, throughout each day, throughout each moment uh, of our lives as we can turn, continue to journey in faith uh, uh, and, and share the gospel with others. Lord, bless us this morning, and we love you, and we pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen. You know, if you look at the definition of worship, it, it simply says reverence offered to God, reverence offered to God. And it is our reverence reflected in our love to God through our devotion or through our, uh, our um, uh, admiration or our adoration uh, that is produced because of God's loving kindness towards us. In other words, as the scriptures tell us, we love other, we love God and others because God first loved us. And that is a key point to our faith and a key point to this morning's this morning scripture passage. Now, just prior to this morning's main scripture passage that is in the 10th chapter of Luke, we find a similar position to where we were last week in the 12th chapter of Mark. In fact, the, the conversation that takes place in the 10th chapter of Luke uh, with Jesus and another person is in some ways identical as it was last week. And yet that conversation, once again, is focused on that, that same scripture passage, the great commandment. But while the focus of the story is the same, the dialogue the dialogue around the story is quite different. The passage from today's text in Luke 10.25 states this. It states, on one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. And so once again, just like last week, we have an expert or a teacher of the law standing up from the crowd, from the crowd who is apparently seated, standing up to bring attention to himself, but also to bring attention to the question that he is about to ask in order to test Jesus. The man says, teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? But rather than answer the question, as, as Jesus did last week, Jesus turns the, the tables on the man and instead asks the man, what is written in the law? How do you read it? And the man answered, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. And so true to his profession, this teacher of the law quotes the same scriptures that Jesus quoted last week 
And in doing so is in essence telling Jesus and all of those listening around him that every part of a person, thoughts, emotions, feelings, and actions must be directed by a love for God and a love for one's neighbors. And Jesus responds to the man's reply by saying, you have answered correctly. Do this and you will live. You know, the reality is, is that Jesus probably knew how the man was going to answer the question before he answered the question. Perhaps while, while asking the question, Jesus even pointed to the man's head or perhaps to the man's hand, where oftentimes Jewish leaders would attach small leather boxes called phylacteries. These small boxes contained the most important scripture passages. As I said last week, these small boxes would have contained the, the heaviest or the weightiest passage from the Torah, from the first five books of the Old Testament. And so in answering Jesus, the, the man would have simply needed to recite from memory the passages that were in the box. But then in today's passage, it goes on to say this about the man. It says, but the man wanted to justify himself. So he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? And who is my neighbor? In essence, what the man was seeking was not only a way to test Jesus, but also a public affirmation for, for himself, that he was completely fulfilling the, wall, the law in the way that he was loving his neighbor. Now, Jewish teachers, when, when you were to talk about one's neighbor, Jewish teachers understood one's neighbor as being a, a fellow Israelite. That was the common uh, denominator, the common understanding of, of the Israelite society, that, that a neighbor was your, your brother or sister who was an Israelite. Perhaps the man even had a copy of, of the scripture passage that pointed to that from Leviticus 19.18, uh, in, in the phylactery or in the, the box that was on his hand or forehead that he might have been wearing. That passage states, Do not seek revenge or bear a grudge against a fellow Israelite, but love your neighbor as yourself. Yes, the teacher of the law had no doubt fulfilled th this requirement of, of that law. But perhaps like most, he was, he was lacking in the the commandment that pointed to a greater kind of love just a few short verses later in the same chapter that said this, Do not take advantage of the foreigners who live among you in your land. Treat them like native-born Israelites and love them as you love yourself. Yes, most likely Jesus is looking into the man's heart and can see that indeed his love for neighbor has limits. And so in response to the man's question, who is my neighbor, Jesus tells a parable that no doubt you're familiar with. Jesus said a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road when he saw the man. He passed on the other side. So too, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came to where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and, and bandaged his wounds, pouring oil and wine on the wounds. Then he put the man on his own donkey and brought him to an inn and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper and said, Look after him, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense that you have. And so here was a Jewish man, a man who had left Jerusalem and was traveling to Jericho, I believe the, the nickname for that road was called, uh, was called the Blood Road. Uh, lots of attacks on that road. And this Jewish man who has left Jerusalem on the way to Jericho is attacked by robbers and, and finds himself in need of help. 
his fellow Israelites, men who would have known their responsibility to, to stop and help him, a priest and a temple worker, do not respond, but, but they simply walk by on the other side. But finally, a, a Samaritan came along. Now, this man, who was, who was seen as a foreigner, was hated by Israelites because of his race and, and because of his worship practices. So hated were the Samaritans that, that when a proper Jew traveled from, from Galilee in the north to Jerusalem in the south, they had to go through Samaria, but a proper Jew would not. They would travel out and across the Jordan River and down the desert and then back across the Jordan River and up the road that went from Jericho to Jerusalem, right? Just so they would not step on Samaritan soil. But it was this man, the Samaritan, who bound up the injured man's wounds, who carried him to an inn, who paid for his care. And so Jesus finishes the parable by asking, which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of, of the robbers? And the expert of the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. And Jesus told him, go and do likewise. Who was a neighbor to the man who was injured? The one who had mercy on him. And Jesus tells each of us, go and do likewise. You see, the teacher of the law did not leave justified because, because he had placed limits on his love. Now, no doubt, we all suffer from this. The further a person is from the center of our heart, the greater propensity uh, for us to, to place limits on our love. For instance, if we see our child or, or our grandchild or our loved one making a comment on on social media that goes against every fiber of our being. We immediately start to, to pray for them and, and start to carry a burden for their actions. But let a person that we don't know have the same indiscretion, say the same words, make the same point on social media, and we will look at the screen and declare, you idiot. And yet we know the words of Jesus when he said, You have heard it. You have heard that it was said of people long ago, do not murder. And anyone who murders will be subject to judgment. But I tell you that anyone who is angry with his brother will be subject to judgment. The famous preacher A.W. Tozer once said, We cannot pray in love and live in hate and still think we are worshiping God. We cannot pray in love and live in hate and still think we are worshiping God. This past week, I have been, I have been reading Marlena Graves' new book. I think I mentioned that a couple of weeks ago, The Way Up is Down. It's a great book. If you haven't, haven't uh, had a chance to read it, I hope you do. In chapter two, she tells the story. In fact, it's a wonderful story. The story is about her pastor, a guy by the name of Russ. Amazing, huh? How on one Sunday morning he, he introduces the, the, the Jewish concept of, of tikkum olam, tikkum olam, a Hebrew phrase that means repairing of the world. I don't know if you remember that, that phrase or even that sermon, but, but I talked about how through hesed, how through the, the Hebrew word that is translated as loving kindness or mercy, how through the word hesed, God repairs a broken word, a world, how God repairs a broken world. That is what the, the, G, the Jewish faith believes, that through God's loving kindness and mercy, he repairs the world. And how much more through our Christian faith can we see that happening? How through Hesed, how through God's loving kindness and mercy that is found in Jesus Christ, God repairs a broken world. First, by showing loving kindness and mercy to, to you and I who were enemies of God. And then by allowing us to be instruments of his grace and extend loving kindness 
to our neighbor no matter where they are located. Marlena adds to my definition by saying this. She says, God's loving kindness transforms us from a people whose natural inclination is to creatively hate God and our neighbors because that's where we are in our sin. But moves us from that into a people who embody kindness. God's loving kindness transforms us from a people whose natural inclination is to creatively hate God and our neighbors into a people who embody kindness. As Hesed works its way through us, God repairs the world. You see, our worship of God can be the most powerful force that the world has ever known. As in countless ways over the course of our lives, little by little, thought by thought, word by word, action by action, God's loving kindness and mercy works its way through us and brings healing into relationships, in our homes, and in our schools, and in our jobs, and in our churches, brings healing into our relationships, in our community, and in our state, and in our nation, and in our world. For we know in our heart of hearts that everyone is our neighbor. You see, we can't put God's loving kindness and mercy in a box and tie it on our foreheads or, or tie it to our hand because, because God's loving kindness and mercy cannot be contained in a box. And if we are attempting to contain it, if we are attempting to place borders on our love for our neighbor, then we are not loving God with all of our heart and soul and mind and strength. You know, our relationship with God, our relationship with God promises that he will, that he will never put borders on his love for us. And perhaps King David understood that better, better than most when he wrote this as he was finishing out the 23rd Psalm. When he's speaking of, of God's love, he says, Surely your goodness and hesed, surely your goodness and love, surely your goodness and loving kindness, surely your goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, I stand here as one who confesses that your love, when poured out on me, is received like a, like a parched soil uh, receiving a, a fresh spring. And yet, Lord, when it comes time for me to pour my love out onto others, it seems like, well, gosh, it seems like at times I'm just all dried up. Or it help us to be a conduit, not a sponge or a lake. Help us to be a conduit for your love, that as your love, that as your loving kindness, that as your mercy flows into our lives, Lord, that we might receive that fully, so fully, that we overflow into the lives of others. Lord, whether they're in our own home, our next-door neighbor, on the TV, on Facebook, in the paper, or simply driving down the road. Lord, let us not be a people of, of anger and judgment and criticism, but let us be a people of prayer and loving kindness and mercy so that through your power, Lord, you might work through us to repair the world. Lord, bless us this morning. We love you and we pray, pray this in the name of Christ. Amen. And now we're gonna make our cars full of sound again as we join together in singing, Pass It On. that 
That's how it is with God's love. Once you've experienced it, you spread His love to everyone. You want to pass it on. What a wondrous time is spring when all the trees are budding. The birds begin to sing. The flowers start their blooming. That's how it is with God's love. Once you Shout it from the mountain top. Hey world, I want my world to know the Lord of love has come to me. I want to pass it on. Thanks for joining us today for. Uh, worship and join us again next week either online or here in the church parking lot um, as we gather again at 8 30 and 10 30 and next Sunday we will be celebrating the sacrament of Holy Communion if you brought um, food to donate to the Friendly Center through the United Methodist Women and you did not unload that you can do that as you are leaving today and also give your offering as you are leaving today if you forgot to bring food today for the Friendly Center you can bring it by um, tomorrow. That'll be the last time. And we have some new office hours right now as our secretary is home recovering from hip surgery. So our office will be open for the next few weeks from 8.30 until 2 o'clock. So that's when the building will be open for you. And be sure to tune in this week for the second week of the Love Your Neighbor 419 Vacation Bible School. Um, that starts tomorrow night, and the links are provided in the program. So we sang that song, Pass It On. So let those be your marching orders to go out from this place. You have experienced the love of Christ. Now pass it on to others in a world so desperate to know the unconditional love of Jesus Christ. A love that does not rejoice in wrong, but rejoices in the truth. Go now in peace and God bless you. Please follow the usher's instructions.